What's up everybody, Risky Bitness here. Uh, no joke tonight, I just wanted to get right into the video. I want to talk a little bit about RetroArch, because last time we had a tutorial that was a quick RetroArch setup, a real quick and easy setup for you guys just to get you up and running. But you might have noticed a couple of things. Right out of the box, when you're playing a game in RetroArch right now, you'll notice that you've got these big, ugly black bars on the side of the screen, right? And nobody likes that, that's just, it's a little bit ugly, it's unsightly. So what are you going to do about it? Well, some folks might be kind of okay with it, I guess, and they can ignore it, maybe they're sort of used to seeing it. Uh, and others might resort to really bizarre ways to try and deal with that, like stretching the image to fill up the whole screen, which really looks just awful. Everything is stretched out, it looks really ugly. Circles are now practically ovals. That's really not the best way to deal with it. It doesn't look anything like it used to after you do that, and it looks really, really bad. This looks so much nicer, right? And look, if that's what you want to do, I'm not going to stop you, but it's no way to live your life. So what you can do in RetroArch that's really cool, uh, that you can't do in any standalone emulators, is you can add an overlay. To do that, you would go into Quick Menu, On Screen Overlay, you would turn on Display Overlay, you see I've got a Nintendo overlay loaded in here right now. And you could have one overlay and save it for every single system. All you would do is go back out one screen, go back out two screens. I'm sorry, go back out one screen, go to Overrides, and then save Core Overrides, that's everything for that emulator, or save Game Overrides if you want that bezel to be specific to that game. So you would go in here, you go to your Quick Menu, you go to your on-screen overlay, turn on display overlay, you go to overlay preset, you pick your directory and you find the overlay that you want. Now you're probably already watching this and thinking this is really tedious. Uh, some of you might already kind of be like, wait, what? What do you do? How many steps? And this all kind of ties back into what I was talking about in that first video where the UI just isn't super duper intuitive, right? So I managed to change the UI, but now, you know, I think that I'm done, right? I go and I play my game, and oh, wonderful, you know, this is great. And then I go to open the game again, and the overlay is not there. And the reason why is because I didn't save it. So I go back one screen. I go to overrides. And then save game overrides. And after you do that, now this bezel, this overlay, is going to be there every time you play the game. And it looks cool, and it's great. But some of you might have a lot of games, and you might not want to do that for every single game, right? I mean, and who could blame you? So we're gonna work on that a little bit. We're gonna use a little tool called Bezel Project. Now, I've already got it here on my desktop, but I'd like to show you how to find it. And this by itself could actually be a little bit tricky, so I'm going to take you through it. So look, I like to th make things easy, right? If I'm looking for something, I just Google it. So I'm Googling Bezel Project, and the very first result that comes up is this GitHub site. Bezel Project slash Bezel Project. The Bezel Project. Some good uh, SEO right there. Now, you can use this not just on your PC, you can also use it on a Raspberry Pi. If that's something you'd be interested in seeing a tutorial video on, let me know and I'll, I'll create that video for you. And, uh, yeah. So now, the main question we're going to have here is, alright, it gives us all this information, but I just want this on my PC. Where can I just download a binary, right, to get this on my PC? We're going to go to the Bezel Project home on GitHub. We're going to click on Repositories, Bezel Project, Windows. So mostly pretty intuitive, right? The Bezel Utility Pack for Windows. We scroll down and we find the Releases page is where we're going to get our download. So it took a little bit of uh, effort to find this, right? And that's not, uh, you know, that's not by accident. You know, GitHub is for developers, it's, it's set up the way it is for a reason. But, you know, we're going to use our knowledge and our brains and we're going to get the information that we're looking for. 
So I'm downloading Bezel Project Setup EXE, grabbing that binary, Windows yelled at me, but I'm going to tell it to run anyway, which you should never ever do unless you for sure trust the source of what you're getting. We already know what this is, we know where it's coming from. Um, in a previous video, somebody asked me, you know, this is an executable file, it's an EXE file, is that safe? And normally if you ask me that question, I'm going to say, you know, well, that's a really good question because it depends where it's coming from. If you clicked on a link and you already know where that link goes and what that link is going to give you, then absolutely it's safe. If I went out to the internet and I clicked on this website because I wanted to go there and get what they have, then absolutely. Now, if I went to some other website and wasn't expecting a download or wasn't expecting a program, then I would not trust that, that exe. So that's more of a rule for if you have like, a, you know, you're trying to download a file like a picture and the picture says it's not exe, that's no good. But we know this is a program, so we want that exe. All right, I'm gonna accept the uh, license agreement it's going to give us a whole bunch of information here. And it's actually really, really, really important. Before we move on, I want to pinpoint this specific bullet point here. These bezel packs will only work if the ROMs you are using are named according to the no intro naming convention used by MU Movies, Hyperspin, and Rocket Launcher. So what is no intro? It sounds like, oh, they're cutting the intros off of games, and that's not really what it is. Uh, there's, there's reasoning behind that, but I'm not going to go into it here. What it is is a unified standard of naming ROMs that is more or less unilaterally observed by the entire retro gaming emulation community. So basically what this group called no intro did is they came up with a, a standard way to name all their ROMs that everybody else has kind of copied since then. and all the utilities that you're going to use are going to want to be on the same page. So what is the no intro ROM naming convention? In a very simple uh, term, it's game title, country in parentheses, file extension, Super Mario Brothers, USA, dot NES. Now, if your ROMs are not named that way, you're going to want to rename them so all your ROMs are following that standard. If you are ever unsure, again, we're going to use our Google machine, right? No intro naming convention. Now, this is going to bring us to the Datomatic, long, dry, kind of pain in the butt. But if you scroll down a bit, it's going to show you all the details. If you want something a little simple, you can go to the No Intro website where they're going to give you a little bit more information. So if you're a little bit unsure about how you can change this, you know, there is the Datomatic, that's a utility that can help you do it. But really, when you dump your ROMs, you should make sure that you're using the no intro naming convention at that time. So when you first get your ROMs, make sure that they're in the no intro naming convention. That's the best way to ensure that all of this stuff is going to work. Once again, as always, I cannot tell you where to get ROMs. Nobody really is going to do that because nobody wants to risk being accused of piracy. So just make sure that when you dump your ROMs that you use the no intro naming convention. And you know you can Google that whenever you're trying to find it. If you're trying to find the no intro naming convention, just make sure that you Google that phrase and you'll find it. All right, so now with all that out of the way, now we're ready to go ahead and continue our bezel project installation. I hope that didn't come up as too much of an aside. So you'll see here, it's asking me if I want to create a desktop shortcut. You probably noticed I've already got a desktop shortcut, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to do that anyway. So this is gonna tell us that this already exists. Now by default, it wants to install into your app data folder, which I guess is fine. I didn't see an option here to change it, so it's not a big deal. And at the end, we have our desktop shortcut, 
and we can launch Bezel Project. So what does Bezel Project do? It gives you a bunch of warnings, and then it gives you this menu here, and I'll get this browser window out of the way so you can see it better. Download, uninstall, update Bezel Pack, which will automatically enable Bezels. And that's what you're going to want to use most of the time. And you can do that for MAME, for RetroArch, and even for Rocket Launcher, or PS3, Switch. So you have a lot of options here of what you can do, right? Now, these buttons here, Rocket Launcher, PS Classic, PS3, these are all if you're running uh, emulation software on those platforms. If you're running the emulator on Android, if you're running it on your PS Vita. If you're running standalone MAME, not with RetroArch, but standalone MAME. Or, of course, if you're doing like we're going to be doing and running the bulk of your games through RetroArch, right? So, and why I say, and I did say before that standalone emulators don't support this, MAME is the one exception to that rule, because MAME a long time ago integrated the ability to put uh, marques and bezels onto your game screens. So we're going to say process retroarch, okay, and right here you can choose all of your bezels that you want to update for all your systems. Now I am going to go back one step real quick because I want to make a quick change here. Under preferences, this is where you're going to tell it where your uh, where your retro arch is, where your meme is. That's really important. Or of course these, if you're going to create a set of bezels that you're going to later on export out to another device, you would put them here. So if you're running uh, retro arch on your PS3, for example and you want to get a collection of bezels, you'll create a folder, you'll export the bezels, and then you'll put them on a flash drive or over the network, however you do, and bring them over to your PlayStation 3, uh, which is, if that's something you're interested in learning more about, if you're running RetroArch on a third, uh, another platform, you know, on a Wii or a Switch or whatever it is, then let me know if that's something you want to see a little bit more of a demo of, and I'll see what I can do. I don't have a PS3, or PS Vita, I don't have any of those, so I mean, I'll see what I can do. I can probably find footage of someone doing it, and then I'll, you know, give my my uh, lesson, I guess, on how to do it. You know, if you prefer my, uh, if you prefer me over someone else, because <laughs> lots of people do these videos. So anyway, all I really worried about for our purposes is the RetroArch install directory. Now I have pointed to my established RetroArch, but I'm going to change this to the RetroArch that I set up just for you guys. And that RetroArch is under my RetroArch example folder. So that's all you're doing is you're just pointing it to the RetroArch folder, wherever you have RetroArch installed. Now if you're watching this video and you've gotten to this point and you don't know where you have RetroArch installed, you need to know that. And the only way you're going to be able to figure that out is by looking through the files on your computer and finding it. And you know, that's something that's really important to take you track of and be aware of. Otherwise, nothing you're going to try to do is ever going to work. So with that out of the way, I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to go to my download slash uninstall slash update bezel pack. And you're going to see that all of these say install because I don't have any bezel packs installed yet. Now this is going to take a while. Now you don't want to ever choose update install script unless you are really tinkering with things. Now I am going to go ahead and make this quick, right? I could choose everything, but I really don't want to do that. I don't want to choose everything and then have it, you know, have it be a headache later. So I think for our purposes here, I'm just going to select, for example, NES overwrite platform bezel config files I recommend to say yes to that and prompt for update uninstalls you can leave that at the default for now so now there are a lot of NES titles and what this is gonna do is this is gonna download every single bezel for every single title that they've done and now bezel project have done a tremendous absurd number of bezels this is running pretty fast because I have a fast computer but it might run a little slower for you 
but looking at that pretty quick so far. And now it's of course moving those files to the destination folder where they need to be. Now if I go to my RetroArch installation folder, you'll notice that this overlays folder was just updated. And now if I go to Game Bezels, NES, I now have a config file and a ping file for every game. And bada bing, bada boom, real super easy and we're done. You know, we didn't have to really do a whole hell of a lot here. Uh, we downloaded an application and we ran it. That's pretty much it. We told it where RetroArch is and it did its magic. I hope all that was really clear. Now when I go into my RetroArch and I boot up a game, it's going to automatically have a bezel. I don't have to do anything. Bezel project. Now I have this really cool overlay on my screen. It's really nice artwork. Um, I don't know where the artwork came from. It might be original artwork. Some of it's some of it's original artwork. Some of it's box uh, art. You know, they're all different. Every game's going to have its own overlay. If they, by any chance, did not make an overlay for a specific game, then you'll see instead just a platform overlay. Like this, there'd be a Nintendo NES overlay instead. And you can further customize and edit these, but I wanted to make this super duper easy. So this is our quick and easy RetroArch bezel setup. Easy stuff. Now with that out of the way, there's a few things that I wanted to talk about before I close out the video. The main thing is if you like this video and you're liking the content, I want to ask you to please like with that thumbs up button down there and subscribe. I know subscribing doesn't do anything for you, but for me, that would make it possible for me to monetize the channel if I get 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. If I can do that, then I have a budget. And a budget's important because that means I can buy things for the channel. I can start buying hardware for videos on the channel. I can start buying software for videos on the channel. So it gives me a lot more that I can work with to bring more content to you. Uh, I could get a Raspberry Pi with, uh, you know, all the, the, the newest uh, hardware. Uh, and I could get, I have a Raspberry Pi, I get a newer one. I could get a um, capture card so I can show you top to bottom from the very beginning how to build a Raspberry Pi. I get a camera and do more off camera stuff. I'm using a webcam right now. I could do more stuff that's not me sitting at a desk where I can get hands on with different hardware or, you know, just a lot of other different ideas would be possible if I wasn't tethered to this spot. So just some things, something that I would really appreciate if you could do that. Uh, of course, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, you know, leave a comment, even if it's just like a quick comment, hey, nice video, hey, thank you, just to, to push me up in the algorithm a little bit and let YouTube know that you're enjoying this and you want to see more. I also got away from scripted content because it just wasn't really very popular. So. If that's something you're interested in, take a look at some of my older videos on my channel, and if you like it, you know, do those same things. Like, comment, you know, share the videos, you know, give me a little bit of help getting pushed up in the algorithm, and I can do more scripted videos if I start seeing a trend there. Uh, and yeah, that's it, and that, you know, that'll give me more to work with. Um, and let me know what you want to see. You know, is there any particular specific tutorial you would like to see? Is there any specific particular feature of an emulator you want me to cover? Or just a game you would like to see more footage of? Let me know that in the comments below. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try and deliver what I can. And that's it. Yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and commenting, and all that stuff that every YouTuber tells you to do. But it is important. It, it's going to really determine whether or not I can make this channel work. So... That's it, man. Thank you very much once again for all your time. I think I've said that four times by now because I'm completely ad-libbing right now. Have a good night and enjoy your games.